All right, so here I am with Electra. We went to the bookstore. You saw us picking out a book to buddy read. And I think we're going to, because it's so short, we're going to buddy read it within the next six weeks, maybe. Yeah. Before you leave. Yeah. So great. And what was it? Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen's something. Beautiful Losers. Yes. And it was, uh, uh, Leonard Cohen, most of you know, I'll put the, move over a little bit so that we can put the book image right there. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Cohen is iconic as a s lyricist, so songwriter, songwriter and musician. musician. He's not that, he's, I didn't think he was ever that great of a singer, but his songs were so beautiful. You like his voice? Please don't. Let's really? Not even go there. You like his voice? I, like. I didn't hate his voice, but I preferred the best. I'll take the book away from you right now. <laughs> you really loved his voice? Yeah. Okay. Very much so. Um, the best. Uh, rendition of his songs was the album from the 1990s by jennifer warns famous blue raincoat so check that out but no I, I i liked listening to him sing his songs but it was in spite of his voice not because of his voice but the poetry oh, oh. of the of the songs amazing yeah. and i i was exposed to him for the first time should I rephrase that? I was exposed to <laughs> yes, in, in university. My best friend in university, James, introduced me to his poetry and his songs. Okay. And we used to... Did we used to get drunk? I don't know if we got drunk. I always got drunk. But anyway, we used to get together and sing Suzanne together. And I think I can still recite the entire song mm. i won't it's my prove favorite it. song I, suzanne yeah, takes you is, down yeah. to the place, the place near, near the, the river, river. Yeah. you can see the boats wow. go by you, you can, can see spend. the river answer well, i'm mixing it up too. that's yeah. later so <laughs> no 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 I haven't, i've forgotten part of it but uh, very nostalgic well done, yeah, memory for 40 years ago yes <laughs> not 40 <laughs> three years ago <laughs> okay Whatever you say. <laughs> and I read Beautiful Losers around that time, and I remember that I really liked it, but I have no memory of it. So we're going to buddy read it. Really? Even yeah, I, it was three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I betray myself. So that was fun. And then we went out to a lovely restaurant near here, and I drank too much. Electra's got I to ate catch too much. <laughs> Electra's got to catch up to me. But we're back here, and Kenji will be home soon, and we might even pull him in front of the camera. But Same while we're that. waiting, what have you what have you been reading lately, Electra? I hear you've got some things to complain about. I have a list of grievances as You're I always do with books. Channel Sean the Book yeah. Maniac. Yeah. So I have to look at my list, but I read the biographer's mustache. Oh, who's that by? Kingsley Amos. Okay. So who is not my favourite writer in the world? But you've read so many books by him. No, really. I've read, I, you have so uh, many books on your shelves. Yes, but I've only read a couple. Did you like any of them? No, I can't say that. Okay. Well, here's the thing. So I read um, Take a Girl Like You. I read that last year. Take a Girl Like You. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that really didn't go down well. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to give him a break. I have his books, but I'm not going to read them for a while. So... But his son is Mar also an Martin author. Amos, yes. yes. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm going to give him a try. Martin. Yes, Martin. And as I was about to pull out a book of his, I didn't. I accidentally pulled out one by Dad. Oh. Completely I hate when that happens. And I didn't realize, and... I have this, oh, you know, we have very different reading styles, but I have this, like, compulsive, I have to finish this yes, you do. kind of reading habit. So, <laughs> so how many pages in Such before you realized you were reading Kingsley no, and not No, no, as soon as I started, I did, but it was like, it's too late now. Wow! <laughs> so I knew, and the thing, the thing being, I wasn't going to, like, not ever read his books. Yeah. They were on my shelf, so I was going to read them at some point, so I was like, Oh, sucks for me, but I'm gonna have to read it now. And then I started, and it was just really not a great book. <laughs> and which one was that? The Biographer's Mustache. Okay, yeah. and it's a novel. Yes, and it's um, 
just not a very good novel. <laughs> have you read any Kingsley Amis novels that you liked? Nope. Not that I, I haven't read Lucky Jim, which is supposed to be his, his like, most mass famous one. Yeah, I've never read anything by him or his son, but I'm interested to try it. But, uh, but don't. <laughs> well, maybe his son. I don't know. I haven't read him, but. Just don't try the bad for now. <laughs> okay, so that I was... I would not recommend them at any rate. So are you sure you're not willing to reconsider your stance on Bailey? No. Like, definitely not. Like, I I've just been, I've been working on her for <laughs> years! She's as, so, she's as uh, uh, yeah. stalwart uh, and rigid as Steve Donahue. Yeah, well, you read obsessively. I read compulsively. Oh. I think we have very... We're on very different sides of OCD. Okay. <laughs> so can, can you say more about that? Well, you know, you read like your life depends on it. Mm. I read like how's going to break loose the moment I give up a book. Mm. We're wandering into deeply <laughs> philosophical territory here. Yeah. Like for you it's like it's an, you enjoy it, mm. but you also like it's almost an addiction. Mhm. For me, it's like, I've started this, I have to do it. I hate it, I fucking hate it, but I still, I, I have to finish this book, basically. Mm. Which is what I'm doing with my time in December. Like, I finished my reading challenge. So yeah. I'm punishing myself for that by reading all the books I haven't finished yet. What was your reading challenge? It was 50 books. So you met that, and now how many yeah. books are you hoping to add to that? I'm not hoping to add anything. Mm. I'm just hoping to clear myself for the new year, which is not going to happen because there's a lot of books that I just don't think I can get through in a year, <laughs> like alone just now. Yes, you're a very different reading <laughs> animal than I am. I can't remember, how much did I introduce you in that first little video outside the bookstore? Not at all. Not really. So you said I'm leaving. I think that's about okay. it. So how do we know each other, Electra? Oh, you were going to tell that story in Japanese, weren't you? Oh, you were no. You making that, promises. That was the wine talking. I think that was before the wine, but okay. So you were... You used to live in Canada. You're Canadian. I'm Canadian, yes. And my husband uh, lived in Canada for a while, and you were his... English teacher? That's right. Your husband is Gaku, and Gaku yes. used to be my student in Canada about a dozen years this ago. This is kind of cold. Do we need to have this? Oh, boy. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take my is shirt... Is this like... I'm going to have to take my shirt off. Is this going to warm up, or is this... No, this oh, is cool. You take your shirt off, because I can't put up with this. <laughs> okay, I'm cooled down now. So, uh, uh, Gaku was my student, and also became a good friend, and then he's Japanese, but I taught him in Vancouver... And then after he started his job here in Tokyo, he got transferred to Turkey. And what happened then? I think he met me, of all people. But are you Turkish? I'm not. I'm Greek. You're Greek? Um, what the hell were so you doing? <laughs> all right, we're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was doing a gap year in Turkey. I was, I studied... A gap year? Yes. Gap, gap year. Gap year, gap year. <laughs> So I was, uh, it was after my university graduation, I was just lay about in Turkey. I was improving my Turkish language skills because I studied, well, what I studied is a very complicated story. Let's not go into that. But I was studying Turkish basically. And then I met Gakko and it was not love at first sight. Let's not exaggerate here. <laughs> Love at first bite. <laughs> Second L little, bite, little closer, maybe. A little closer to the mark. Yeah. Second bite, maybe. But, uh, yeah, basically, um, we ended up together after meeting at the uh, Texas Language School. And then I was going to go to the Netherlands. And then I didn't. And then I ended up here. So you came back to Tokyo with Gaku. Yes. And at that time, you spoke... Greek, your native tongue, and yeah. you were uh, native level fluent. You're native level fluent in English, wow. and you are very fluent in Turkish. Yes. And what? And now you're very fluent in Japanese. I'm not very fluent. But let's, not, let's be fair. But I, compared I to me, have this conversation in Japanese. Like, 
it's just not possible physically. What language do you and your husband speak in? We speak in Turkish. Exclusively? Yes. Yes. She's Greek. He's Japanese. They speak each other. No, Gakri doesn't speak Greek. But you both speak He's English. Very hard, you both speak English. Doesn't. You both speak Japanese. Neither of you is Turkish, but you communicate with each other exclusively in Turkish. But that's fair, right? I think Isn't it's absolutely fabulous like and to totally English, fascinating. If we were to speak in English, it's not my native tongue and it's not his native tongue, but I would definitely have an advantage there because I'm more familiar with it. But in Turkish, we have basically like an equal start in life. So it's we can have arguments and... You know, I win, but it's not down to language. Well, I think it's fabulous. And plus, when you're here in Japan, you can talk about all the people around you at social events, and nobody exactly. knows what you're talking about. So. Yes, exactly. That's great. And that's why we do it, maybe. <laughs> so I met you about six or seven, seven years ago, seven maybe. Years ago. Seven years ago, when you came to Japan. And uh, what did you think of me? Oh, that was a nightmare, wasn't it? Well, you don't remember it. I do. Say. I do. Not really, though. You remember uh, I got really, really drunk. <laughs> I got really, really drunk. Surprise, surprise. But it was fun. Like, it was fun. You know, it, like, the fact that we're here seven years later speaks for us. It does. Like, it speaks for itself, I and, think. And it wasn't for a few more years before you and I kind of connected on books. Yeah. Because, like, I wasn't, you were I, taking I, a break. I was not literature. reading so much, and I didn't. We, you and I never talked about reading yeah. until a few years later, and then we did some yeah. buddy reads with Lindsay, and... And, yeah. and we're on Goodreads together, and now you're yeah. debuting on my booktube channel. Yeah. So, like, so, Lindsay and I talked you back into reading, basically, and now you're, like, the YouTube star. <laughs> How annoying is that? <laughs> Would you ever consider starting your nope. own YouTube channel? Nope. That was quick. Why? Not too bad, little. Because it, it takes a lot of effort and discipline that I just do not possess. <laughs> uh... Electra was an important part of a big event in my life this year. She was the photographer. She is a photographer. She was the photographer at my mine and Kenji's yeah. wedding in Canada in August. And that was just fantastic. It, it was, was. I can honestly say it was one of the highlights of my career as a photographer, oh. and it will always be because mm. you know it's great to be part of anyone's love story, but you know your friend's love story is very different. If I put, if I put one picture from the pictures you took up on the video, which one would you choose? Because I'll put it up right now. So my favorite photo yeah. is not one that would be a fair representation of the whole thing because oh. it's the one of you and your mom. But Ken's is not this. So Where she's putting the corsage on. Yeah. Yeah, and I've I've put that on my channel the day after the wedding, but I'll put it up. And then what would be your second choice that would be more representative of the, the, the in front of the combine? Well, no. Oh, that's the whole group. That's, the whole that's group. not the point of the wedding, okay. is it? Like the one of you and Kenji at the park, like the very last photo we took. And I think that's the very last photo of the uh, the wedding day. Okay. Oh, no, before the party, anyway. Okay. Like, so Kenji is standing in front of you and you're like leaning against the okay. shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one. Okay, well, I'll put those Cause two Because like, it was the last photo, and the moment I said, okay, this is the last one, and we're done, you both kind of relaxed a bit more. Yeah. Okay. I'll you weren't very keen on the photos, were really. you? <laughs> they were beautiful photos. But, you know, the process is not. And, yeah. you know, being a photographer myself, you know, there's a reason behind the camera. I don't enjoy having my photo taken, so I get why you weren't very excited the it was a very on on. beautiful, very stressful day. So what about back to books? So is that all you have to bitch about? No, not nearly. Okay. That's just the one book and I didn't even get to bitch about it. Like the specifics of it. Anyway, it, it was lots of things that were wrong with it. But the main thing that really got to me was that... Um, There were times in the book where... This is the biographer's moustache? Yes. Okay. So basically I thought he was like... The author was adding bits of like just horrible comments that had like no... Like there was no point to them in the story. 
they didn't add to the characters they didn't like subtract from the characters he was he just wanted to add his own commentary mm -hmm. and his own commentary was basically like racist and misogynist and homophobic I was like, okay so he just wanted to add that little comment there about you know queers and you know they're like black and yellow and whatever it's like Okay, <laughs> is that really? Was that written late in his career, mid career? It's in or? the nineties. Oh, or it's late. Not, late. It's he not, didn't yeah. live much longer than that. I think it's he died not about two thousand. At 2000. a time where yellow is like an accepted term for Asian people, so it's not. There's none of you know those excuses going on. I haven't read widely enough to make this pronouncement, but that's not going to stop me from making it. Straight white male writers of that generation yeah. in any country, they're just shit. Yeah. Just shit. Canada. Lots of good writers, but you know, the moment you start making those pronouncements about the queers or whatever. The blacks. Yeah. The yellows the bitches. or whatever. Well, he doesn't say the yellows, but like black and yellow and whatever. Okay, <laughs> calm down you. Do you have another book you'd like to bitch about? Okay, not bitch okay. per se. It, it does sound like I only have complaints about books, which I usually do. That's fair. No, I'm going to pivot in after this, okay. so one more. But I was also reading um, Alan Cummings' memoir. Oh, about his abusive father. Yeah. I hear it's really, I've heard only good things about it, so. It is, it's pretty good. I don't know who he is, so I, I have no desire oh, to read it. No, okay. who is he? He's an actor. Oh, yeah, I don't know anything. <laughs> Fair Mo enough. Movie actor? or a bit of everything, okay. really. He's very uh, versatile. Has, has he been anything that I might have seen? Do you watch TV shows? No. Okay, that's not very helpful. Um, <laughs> so you haven't seen The Good Wife? No, which is I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Web therapy. That's a show? Yeah. Oh my god, I've never heard of it. <laughs> okay. It was really funny, actually. But anyway, um, he was really funny. In it okay. As well. but anyway, yeah, he's been in like tons of things, but nothing uh, comes to mind that like necessarily you would know. Oh, it sounds like a. If you haven't seen The Good Wife, I think I have no idea what to like go to next. I really liked it. Oh, okay. You liked I'm gonna it? I'm going to give it like a three star rating. Three stars and you yeah. liked it? Yes. We have, again, you had that discussion with, with Lindsay, Lindsay. yes. And I'm, you know, I'm closer to Lindsay on that front. I, I don't just give out stars like they're candy. I don't even give out candy. Why would I? You don't even give out candy like yeah. it's candy. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, like if I really like a book, but it's not, you know earth shattering or like it's not gonna change my life it's three to four if it's if it's life changing it's four to five it just comes down to like details basically so tell us about a life-changing read from this year from this year or the last one okay um i haven't given anything five stars i don't think this year maybe marlon bondo like much like Lindsay. <laughs> Maybe Are you sure I've you're not the same person? I don't think I've rated it yet, but I would definitely give it five stars just because, you know, it's, it's very enjoyable and there's nothing wrong with it. And I would definitely read it again. I have actually. But my top read of the year, mm. which will probably be four stars, is um, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Right. We've talked a lot about this. <laughs> I started it on audio. And I bailed after 20 minutes, which was definitely premature, but that's the way I roll. And then I've heard a dozen or more reviews, and 60 or 70% of them have been very negative, and the other ones have been emphatically positive. But I just don't think it's my kind of book. Why did you love it? I loved it not because, you know, the, the plot is very exciting and hard to predict. Or because, you know, it changes, you know, how you view the world. But because I found it very honest. And it's depictions of, like, 
things that you know are next door to you if not in your house and people don't really pay attention to mm. like loneliness alcoholism mental illness like just pure isolation and i found it like really hard to read in that sense that you know it's really quite possible to be surrounded by thousands or even millions of people and still be like really truly alone wow okay that's powerful uh did it remind you of any other books you've read well i think i you really i think you're really gonna love um die my love okay. by ariana harwich because it's a little bit like mm. somewhat like that uh have you read uh convenience store woman is that the right title by S it's newly translated this year it's been getting a lot of buzz it's about it it's been compared to that book well, sorry what's it called i don't know, I don't know if it's completely fine it's been compared to that and it's okay. about a, a middle-aged woman who works at a convenience store in mm. japan and it's okay. on script i haven't i haven't read it the premise sounds good i don't yeah. know if you would follow with yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Any? Uh, let me uh, switch off my drink and uh, yeah. tell me about one more book that you loved. Wait, then... I never got to complain about Alan Cumming. Oh, I th I thought we were. Yeah, oh. no, sorry. No, was... you... So uh, Alan Cummings, what was what? Okay, so my <laughs> one grievance about Alan Cummings' book is that um, so he. I loved it, honestly. Like, there are some cheesy parts, and it's like, it's fair enough. Like, you're talking about your life. You have to have some of that. But, um, it's very honest. Like, how he talks about his abusive father and um, how it affected his life and all of that. But that's great. The one thing that bothered me was uh, how he... Like, he talks about his father's violence, and then he frames it like... I'm sure he was mentally ill. I'm sure there was something wrong with him. But then he goes on to say, well, you know, he was really careful to present a uh, strict but fair kind of front to the rest of the world. So if you're mentally ill to the point of abuse, you're not able to control that abuse, mm. are you? So whether you're mentally Ill, Ill or not is irrelevant if you're able to control how you present yourself to society. So, you know, he could be depressed, he could be bipolar, he could have, you know, a personality disorder. That's irrelevant. If he's able to control his mm. abuse and just keep it inside the house, mm. it's really not relevant. Like his mental health status is really not relevant to the fact that he's abusing his children. Mm -hmm. So it really bothered me that he was going on about that and like, oh, he's a psychopath. Well, he's still able to make that distinction and that choice so it's not a factor you shouldn't be bringing it up i feel because it kind of like dilutes the like on the one hand it dilutes the message mm. about abuse and he's saying that you know i want people to get that message that you know your story it's not normal mm. if you're experiencing that it's not okay it's not normal mm. but at the same time it like you know it it kind of like it bothers me because it does um what's the word um reinforce excuses or no it reinforces some stigmas about mental health ah, okay. which are completely incorrect and it does excuse abuse mm -hmm. it doesn't he's not saying it's okay but mm -hmm. he's saying it's down to mental illness but right. it's not he's making a choice to abuse you in private and pretend to be a good dad in public Oh. Yeah. So that was my beef with that. That's uh, I I uh, always get a fabulous headache talking about things like <laughs> this with Electra. Um. So let's show what what did we buy today? I'll I'll start. <laughs> I bought this African novel, Small Country, by Gail Fay. Gail Fay. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but he is. He was born in 1982 in Burundi. His father's French and his mother's Rwandan. And I've heard a lot of stuff about it. 
since it was published this year, and there was a an affordable paper a hardcover at the bookstore. The translation is by Sarah Artis Artizone, published this year. And I did the page 112 test, and it was fabulous. So that's what I bought. What did you get? And I got Sega. Yeah, we're talking about it at the bookstore. We talked about the bookstore. And I did pull the trigger on this one. Uh, the Leonard Cohen book is available on Scribd, so I thought. I got you onto Scribd, and we both use Scribd a lot. Do you use mostly audiobooks or mostly ebooks there? Audiobooks. I'm about almost, mm, maybe half. on a yearly average, it'd be about 50 50. But. Yeah, I would say it's 15%. E -books e -books. For me. It's getting better and better. The selection yeah. is growing and growing. Yeah. But the one thing that I noticed recently that I don't like is there's an audiobook. It's available. And then you go back to it on your saved library list. And it's not available until the beginning of next month. Like they're cycling through. Like the audiobooks are not available in perpetuity like they used to be. I haven't had. Oh, I've noticed it so much. Like Quite the opposite. I've had books that I'm looking up, and then they'll come up as available soon. And the moment they become available, I get a notification. Okay. Um, so, for example, uh, the Booker Prize winner this year was Anna, Anna Burns' The Milkman. And when I checked it out on audiobook, it was available on Scribd, and that was about three months ago. And then I just checked it again today, and now it's telling me it's not available until December 29th. And that keeps happening again and again. So I think that what the publishers are doing is they're only letting Scribd have their books for like a month at a time, and then they're pulling them and then putting them back. And that, okay. you haven't had that? Because it's happened to me 10 times in the last two or yeah, three months. just pulling your leg, <laughs> No, no. It's, no and it's, it's kind of driving me crazy, but there must be some reason. I, have, I haven't had that, so I have to say. It's... Pretty small sailing on my end. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? What else did you buy? We don't have to talk about oh, anything. What else do you want to talk about? Um, so you brought up red clocks. Can I ask why? Oh, yeah. We both read this. Yes. I loved it and you didn't. You liked it or kind of... Uh, yeah, that was okay. So what was your problem with it? I had no problems with it. It just didn't rise above three stars for me. It was, it was okay. And that was about it for me. I remember you had trouble with the uh, ancient Norwegian female explorer. That was Icelandic, yeah. Uh, Icelandic? That part so, of the story? If I'm not misremembering it. That part didn't work for me at all. But apart from that, it just read like a... Uh, it just read like bad fan fiction for like The Handmaid's Tale to me. See, I didn't think so. Not I, bad, but just imitation, fiction, yeah. derivative. Uh, that was my take on The Power by Naomi Alderman, which won the women's the Bailey's Prize a couple of years ago. I didn't like it at all. Couldn't finish it. But this one to me rose above that, and I I loved it. Mm. Um, what's the book that we have agreed on the most deeply? Have we ever agreed on anything? Handmaid's Tale, maybe. Okay. Didn't you love it? I did. Yeah, yeah, but me too. Are we agreeing on that? I'm not even sure about yeah. that one. You loved it. I loved it. Yeah. So okay. Cool. Any, anything else? I honestly can't think of very much that we are. Uh, what's the uh, Japanese British novelist Kazuo Ishiguro? Ishiguro? Well, never we agreed on that initially. Initially, it never let me go, but yeah. the more I distance I have from it, the less I like it. That's four stars for me. That, that was a five star me. for me, and now it would be down oh, to it. Oh, your five stars don't My, very much to me. <laughs> now it's down to a three or a two star. The more I think about it, I don't like it. I like it less and less. Anything else we've loved together or both hated? I don't think we've both hated things. We've had disagreements about things. But Did you nothing... like the slap? I haven't read it. I want oh, yeah, to read it. you still haven't read it. Oh, I've been very busy. It's on my shelf. Okay. What are you planning to read next? 
Oh, I'm still punishing myself. Do you plan ahead yeah. a lot? I well, I do, and then that never happens. Okay, so you're more. Spent. But I continue to plan, and then that never happens. Um, so I I'm very much a spontaneous reader. I'll say, okay, the next one will be nonfiction, and then something calls out to me, and I have to oblige. So you don't have anything. <laughs> Yeah, coming I, down the pipeline. Like, well, I have a few things like that are. Like I, I pull books out and I'll put them like at the front of my shelf, as like in front of everything else. It's like, okay, this is next, but I honestly don't know if that's gonna happen. So, the one we agreed on, I'm gonna read because yeah. I have to. <laughs> and it's uh, not in a, on a long timeline. book. It's about two hundred pages. Yeah. But that's, that's not ever a factor for me. Like, well, unless I have like a reading challenge and I'm running out of time and it's 1,700 pages, then maybe I won't read it. But it's usually not a factor. It's more like, is it calling to me or not? So you're leaving the country around the end of January. Yep. So when do you, th and you're going to be busy getting ready to go. We'll just meet once We'll maybe meet uh, more than once more, but for the, to make a video, we'll, we'll meet when we've both finished the book. I don't know. I guess so. Yeah. Well, otherwise, like we could meet twice. For video purposes. Right, for video purposes. Yeah. That sounds good. And I'm really curious about this. So, if Electra is willing to wait, and she may not be, I'm planning to read this. Marise, Marise Conde Segu's, Marise Conde's novel, Segu. This is her best-known novel, and she is... What country is she from? She's an African writer, and she won the alternate alternate Nobel Literature she Prize. She writes in French. So. She writes in French. She was born in Guadeloupe. She's a Guadalu Guadeloupian novelist. She was born in 1937, so she's 81. And since she won the prize, I had never heard of her, but I'm planning to do one of her books for Women in Translation Month in, I think it's September. So if Electra's willing to wait, we'll do this together. Otherwise, you can tell me whether it's worth my time. I can wait. I don't know if people want to hear more of my moaning. I always complain about books, even the ones I like. So So should we, like, uh, break some dishes to end yes. the video? Yes. Do you bring want to some of your dishes, please. <laughs> I'm ready to break all of them. So my, my dear friend Electra, thank you for debuting on my booktube channel i hope you'll come back in fact you you're now bound to come back to talk about the leonard yeah. cohen novel in january yeah well next time we can do like a bosphorus background for me oh yeah you know like Elect sure yeah, given me a whole bunch of pointers on how to what 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 did you give me pointers on like you know visually Oh, more so not makeup, not stuff, make, not makeup, videos? but but background. Not makeup, but yeah, background. Well, I, I was more like meaning for the next video, I'll be in Istanbul filming like from my nice little flat. So we'll, we'll set it up. Uh, uh, my friend Ange, who's coming to visit Japan in March, she has done. Other booktubers have done live feeds where everybody's in a different location, but it's all in one video. Okay. I have no idea how that they did that, but I'll ask her. So when you leave Japan, we can still do stuff. Yeah, right? sure. Sounds good and, to and, me. And maybe the the background or makeup problem will be less of a less less of an you issue. You never said anything about makeup, though. You know me; I'm always thinking about makeup. That's All right, my dear. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.